And our last example is looking at the unique situation of what happens when we reflect multiple times over intersecting lines. So a composite of reflections over intersecting lines is equivalent to a rotation. So if I do a flip and a flip, I end up with some sort of a rotation. Now, you have a typo in your note. So the angle formed by the preimage and the final image is twice the angle formed by the reflecting line. So go ahead and change your notes from the preimage and image to the reflecting lines. And you'll see that in a second. So in this example, we're going to reflect over y equals x. And we're going to reflect over y equals 0, or the x-axis. I think everybody is pretty comfortable in knowing that the angle between these two lines is 45 degrees. That y equals x is cutting exactly in half of this 90. So when I think about moving from my pre-image through 0, 0 to my image point, the fact that this angle is double my intersecting lines, 90, feels pretty comfortable just by observational data. And we will confirm that. So when we look at what rule reflects the original reflection, I should say reflection, to go from P to P prime, we reflected over y equals x. And that rule is T of xy becomes T prime of yx. We flip-flop our x and our y. Then when we look at what rule reflects the second reflection, it was really not a good typing day. The second reflection, we went from P prime to P, and that was over Y equals 0, or the x-axis, and that rule is T prime of X minus Y. And we can see when we put these together, the rule that reflects the composite transformation, well, the composite transformation is a rotation, we can see that, in fact, in this case, it's a clockwise 90 rotation. From section 1, we know that the rule of that, t of x, y, will become t prime of y negative x. And if we look at what our flip the x and the y, do the opposite sign on the back, we can see very easily how these two could be written together to get to that final composite rotation after reflecting across two intersecting lines.